Well, it's not really a surprise. I think people have been expecting Evergrande to uh, slide this way for, for some time. The, the, the debt markets have seen it coming. Uh, the share price has been a, a slow train wreck. Um, it is a big deal, though. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen in terms of restructuring, but I wouldn't want to be a supplier or an employee um, or an owner of the debt of Evergrande. Um, whether the assets get taken over by another company, as, as has been rumoured, who knows? Um, I'm sure the government in China will want to do something to protect all the people who put deposits on unfinished houses. Um, but because of the scale of the debt, this is a big deal, and it's it's this is the ripple effect is causing uh, commodity prices to fall. And there is a silver lining to this. It is taking some of the inflation out of the system. We have, have seen many commodity prices run up a lot this year, and this, this is perhaps not such a bad thing. So, so you think the Chinese government will want to do something? I guess the follow-up question is, will they do enough quick enough, uh, or, or does this risk making a, quite a big negative impact to broader Chinese GDP growth, not just the share price of the property sector? I think it's going to have a neg negative impact. It, it already is affecting sentiment. Um, I think new home buyers are going, are going to be wary. Other developers are, are going to be quicker to, to sell assets and probably di discount prices. Um, so in terms of it being enough, that, that is a tough question. Um, some people locally like to think that the government in China is all important and, and can miraculously make everything better again, but I, I don't think that's the case. Um, and Evergrande is not the only problem in China. The, the property sector is not the only problem in China. There are other things that are occurring that, is, that are causing the, the GDP growth rate to slow down. And I suspect next year, 2022, will be a much lower growth year in, in real terms. So get, it sounds like you're pretty concerned, Jason. What, what does then a fund manager who manages an Asian income fund do? What are you, are you changing positions? Well, we, we've been underweight China for some time now, but in the last few weeks, we have cut positions in mainland China, uh, Hong Kong, and trimmed a little bit in Macau. Though I have to admit, I did call down, get caught out a bit in Macau, but we, we're very underweight in mainland China. Um, and we prefer countries elsewhere in the region countries that are democracies, that do have independent judiciaries, where the goalposts can't get moved um, so suddenly, um, because we've been nervous on China. And there is a lot of value in other markets in the region. I've been finding companies in Australia, India, uh, Singapore. I think a lot of emerging market investors generally have been shifting money from China to India this year. And in India's relatively immune, relatively closed economy. Uh, and lower commodity prices, of course, help India uh, in, in some way. 